This is Radio Entrepreneurs, and we're always prepared to share the success of entrepreneurship. And you can find us on your smartphone by typing in uh, Radio Entrepreneurs Network and get us 24-7. Uh, and our next guest is another entrepreneur in our belt, in our notches of our belt, uh, is Patrick Reynolds of Triton Digital. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Uh, Triton Digital. Tell us, what is it? We are a streaming technology company, and uh, we work with clients that uh, deliver audio content to people on kind of a worldwide basis. So that could be pure plays like uh, Pandora, people like that that you might be familiar with, as well as traditional radio stations who are just delivering their over-the-air content to smartphones, desktops, etc. So they're just uh, reaching a wider audience through different technology. So let's say I had a radio show on a traditional radio net uh, station which we did yep uh how w would we go to you or would the station go to you <laughs> the station usually goes to us and says we'd like to deliver this over the air content to mobile and desktop can you help us uh, with content delivery which we do pretty simple pretty simple and now we have an internet radio show would we go to you as well you do and we do a couple of things we in addition to delivering the content will help you measure your audience so you'll be able to look at a dashboard on your computer and see exactly how many people are listening you'll be able to see where they're listening if it's national you know in what markets are you so indexing the of the internet that's a good analogy, I guess you'd say. Yeah, we're sort of the Arbitron slash Nielsen of streaming, right? And wow. we can also tell things, though, about well, you know, what kind of device are people listening on. Do you have more of an iOS crowd? Are you more of a, you know, of a, a you know, Windows phone crowd or whatever the case may be? And then the other thing that we do is we provide ad technology that allows you to advertise to your audience online. And you can do that in a couple of different ways. You can do that on a one-to-many way. So you have one advertiser that wants to hit your entire audience at the same time. We can obviously do that. Or you could have different ads go to different people based on what you know about them. You might have different ads for men versus women. You might have different ads for older people versus younger people. You might have different ads for people in Boston versus Chicago versus Los Angeles, et cetera, et cetera. So our ad technology allows you to do you know one-to-one -one advertising as well. Very interesting. Crowded field? Not really. Uh, it's still kind of a nascent space, as big uh, and a consumer level as Pandora and Spotify and iTunes Radio and iHeartRadio and those people are. It's still on the monetization, the advertising, commercial side. It's still kind of getting up and running. And we have the good fortune of having kind of sniffed out the space a little bit sooner than others. So we've been doing this for about eight, nine years now. That's a long time. It is a long time in Internet years. It's you know, kind of the equivalent of dog years. So, yeah, we, we've we've got a pretty good advantage in, in in the space. Well, so what were you doing before this and what was the inspiration to get it going? I have been in, uh, for my sins, I have been in the advertising space for a long time. And uh, I looked at when video came on to, you know, sort of a digital sphere and people started to watch video online. There was a big commercial enterprise that built around that. It was sort of a little cottage industry where you had people like Hulu and Netflix and different people that were doing ad serving for video. And that made perfect sense. But what I saw with Pandora specifically nobody was really creating kind of an ecosystem around audio it was sort of off to the side so people were very obsessive about video and certainly display but audio was kind of an untapped opportunity and i sort of made a bet after meeting with the founders of the company that i think this will be a really big economy if you will and so i kind of threw my hat in the ring and have been there about six years are you still optimistic about the future of radio yeah, I just think that radio is going to be redefined. It's not going to be uh, solely delivered over the air, f you know, through towers. Radio is going to be radio is going to be radio for the foreseeable future. We think it's just going to be delivered in different ways. It's going to be delivered via mobile. It's going to be delivered via tablet. It's going to be delivered via desktop. It's going to be delivered via uh, toaster. Uh, appliances. I mean, you look at Toasters. some of the things you see now in Asia in particular, where almost everything has a radio inside of it. Every device you can imagine that's baked into everything, which is a huge opportunity if you view it as such. If you view it as, oh, no, I got to cut another check because somebody listened to my station on the refrigerator, then it's self-limiting. So I think we just, again, have to get the, get the finances right-sized, and then I think uh, the golden days of radio are actually ahead of it, not behind it.